Before we go off to lunch, we have another really stimulating presenter on wearable technology. And after that, we will break for lunch, and there's lots to talk about and more pitches over the lunchtime. Our wearable technology demo this time is from Ariel Garten, and she is going to demonstrate Muse, which is nothing less than a brain-sensing headband. Ariel studied at the University of Toronto and did research into Parkinson's disease and hippocampal neurogenesis at Toronto's Kremble Neuroscience Centre. As well as her work in neuroscience, she's also a psychotherapist and a fashion designer whose work has been displayed at the Art Gallery of Ontario. She is the co-founder and CEO of Interaxon, the creators of Muse. Ariel feels that her ability to combine science and art is integral to Interaxon's unique approach to brain sensing technology. With a resume like that, how can you not listen to Ariel? Thank you. Take it away. Thank you so much. That was a very kind introduction. So my name is Ariel Garten. I'm the CEO of Interaxon, and we make Muse the brain sensing headband. So as we all know, there's a sensor revolution afoot. And sensors are changing our digital media experiences. You have sensors that track your body in space, sensors that track your heart rate. And this changes the kind of interactivity and inspires new forms of digital media interactions. Well, until now, there hasn't been a lot of ways to interact with your brain. In the past, if you wanted to interact with your brain and some kind of media, you would go to the hospital and you'd get fitted with 128 electrodes and there'd be masses of wires coming out of your head and somebody on the other side of your room would be seeing little squiggles that represented your brain. And that's about all the digital media interaction you would have. Well, we wanted to change all of that. So this is Muse, the brain sensing headband. It is a clinical grade EEG in a consumer form factor. So it slips on just like this, like a pair of glasses. It's actually able to track your brain activity in real time. It then sends your brain data to another amazing little device that we all have in our pockets. This is my iPhone. I just plugged it in so you could all see what's on the screen, if you want to share the screen. So the lines on the bottom there, that is my brain activity in real time. Now, most of you are not neuroscientists. So you don't know what it means. But um, I'm going to blink, 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 blink. And those are my eye blinks. So now we take this data, and if we could go back to the presentation, please, to the next slide. We take this data, and we put it inside of experiences in some really powerful and meaningful ways. So this is an uh, experiment that we ran in 2003. This is in the lab of Dr. Steve Mann. And here we had 48 people at a time connected to EEGs, and they were able to create music with their mind. We did a number of these where people could actually physically transform the power of their brain activity into audible sound. We then did installations where people in the audience using their brain state could control the musician's sound on stage. So this amazing responsive feedback loop between audience and performer. We then said, OK, how can we demonstrate the real power of the mind by moving big things? So this is the levitating chair. As you sit down in the chair and you relax, the chair will rise. So your brain state is actually allowing you to levitate the chair, thanks to a handy dandy winch that we had in the ceiling. We then said, OK, we want to control some really, really, really big things with our mind and allow the power of the human mind to be sky high. So, oh, actually, first this is responsive environments. So here we created beautiful experiences where your mind could change the environment around you. This is a beautiful interface that was created by Canadian artist Alex McLeod. Sound was by Dan Driscoll, another Canadian music designer. And everything in the environment would change with your brain state. So as you relaxed, the birds would slow down. As you become very engaged, it would begin to snow. The weather would change. You were actually represented in a digital, digital form, represented back to you. And then this is where we allowed people to control really big things with their brain. So during the Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympics, the uh, Ontario government, particularly the Ministry of Tourism, approached us and said, we want to do a massive experiential marketing campaign that allows all the attention for the Olympics to be back onto Ontario. We're going to let Ontarians, and actually anybody who comes to visit the Ontario Pavilion in um, Vancouver, control the lights on the CN Tower, Canadian Parliament Buildings, and Niagara Falls with their brain from across the country. 
So we went from a team of three people in my co-founder's basement to 25 people working across multiple levels of government for a near impossible task and completely succeeded. 7,000 people over the course of the Olympics got to interact with these massive icons from, acro from across the country. Thanks to a uh, media sponsor at the time, CTV, they were actually able to see in real time what they were doing. So this was totally amazing. You could really control stuff with your mind. So we went crazy. We started to control anything we could think of. We had thought-controlled toasters and thought-controlled slot car machines and thought-controlled beer taps. Yes, you want to come to our Christmas party. There is a thought-controlled beer tap. Um, and then we realized that the real power of this technology was actually letting people understand themselves and have very personal experiences of their own brain. And from that, learn. Learn to actually control and enable your inner technology. We kind of looked at the world today and said, well, most of the problems that we suffer actually start up here. You have ADD. One in nine kids is diagnosed with ADD. 90% of them are given Ritalin. Sleep. $63 billion a year is lost in productivity due to lack of sleep. How many of us have sleeping problems? Anxiety. Who has stress or anxiety? Depression, sadness, low self-esteem. 85% of the world has low self-esteem. So we wanted to build a tool that lets people understand their own brain and their own mind and do something to be able to improve it. So this is uh, Muse, our application, Muse Calm. What it does is it lets you hear the sound of your mind. So when you're thinking, ruminating, distracted, you hear it as windy. And as you come to a state of clear, focused attention, you quiet the winds, just like this. And then when you start to think again, the winds pick up. So the content on screen and the audio content you're hearing is actually directly responsive to your brain activity. At the end of the experience, you actually get to see what your brain was doing over the entire time. You get stats, feedback, scores that let you know how calm you could be and when you're distracted. You can see your brain activity every moment. As you do this, some incredibly important things happen. You learn to improve your focus, so you learn that you can avoid the distractions out there in your life. You also learn to improve your internal focus. So your mind no longer wanders to the negative thoughts, the feelings, the stuff that causes you anxiety inside. How many times do you say, oh, I wish my brain just didn't go there because now I'm down this ruminating path about the fight I had with my husband this morning. Oh, let's get back to work. And so this is the tool that lets you go, oh, let's get back to work. We don't need to go there. So we have tens of thousands of people currently musing. And they're seeing vast improvements in their anxiety and their depression, improvements in their sleep. One of my favorite quotes lately is, I can finally sleep like a real person. And uh, this device, although it may seem totally futuristic and out there, is actually available in Best Buy. We're in Best Buy Canada, Future Shop, although I think we're stocked out at the Young and Dundas. I went and checked yesterday. There was nothing left on the shelves. Um, we're starting in Bloomingdale's in the US and also into distribution into Europe and Asia. So this is a device that was created by a tiny little company in Canada that now is in Best Buy. We also have an SDK that's open for anybody to use. So we have over 1,000 developers already signed up that are allowing people to create things like thought-controlled helicopters. I think I've seen four thought-controlled quadcopters in the last few months. People are creating amazing digital media experiences, games that you play directly with your brain, the ability to actually put yourself inside of an experience or have a character or an avatar that knows something about you, really something about you, 3D experiences that are truly immersive because they have you inside the experience, um, also smart games. So we have a number of developers who are building games for kids with ADHD, and there's lots of clinical research that demonstrates that by doing neurofeedback training like this, i.e. playing a video game where you drive the car forward with your focus, you can improve your ADD symptoms as effectively as Ritalin. We actually have over 50 research partnerships currently running um, with institutions like Harvard, Mayo, et cetera. Mayo's using this for cancer care patients to decrease their stress. Harvard's doing a study on sleep. Um, NYU's doing a few studies on learning and memory, education. There's a lot of use for this with digital media, um, digital education portals. And we're seeing really a proliferation of these kinds of devices in the world because we can't ourselves imagine what's going to happen. And it's up to all of our developer communities and all the people who are enabling the technology to bring amazing ideas to life. Thank you.